So we got new uh, filter, the oil situation. We actually got two because we'll be changing this out after the first kind of like half hour of running. There we go. Luckily these are really cheap. Um, so far that's been one of my favorite things about working on this is just how cheap everything is. Um, I think all the vacuum stuff is done except for the brake booster. It's just going to go onto this port. We will install that once the engine is in just because that goes to a brake booster. We don't know how long that hose needs to be yet. No sense cutting something down. We got to get a plug over here. Um, got these two guys. I guess this one goes to like here maybe and this one goes here. Then, let's see, these are the heater core hoses. We'll get just some new standard hose to replace these. These are just terrible. But for the meantime, we don't have to worry about that. We might even just run a loop from this port to this port with a section of that hose, just not even bother using the heater core until we get it running right. So next up, what I'm gonna do is actually bolt on one of our exhaust manifolds, the one that's cracked. And I'll, when it's bolted on here, I'll put two tack welds or so on it to hold it in place, take it off, and then weld up the crack. It's completely split in half at this point. But we need something to be able to get it running. We've been having a hard time finding manifolds that we can use that don't cost too much. A lot of the, the header kits don't really look like they guarantee fitment in the trucks. And I don't want to spend a bunch of money on something that won't even fit. So for now, it's just gonna be weld up the old cast iron one to get it broken in at least, and then figure out something else later on. So the crack in question is this situation here. Um, I don't have high hopes for it coming back together nicely, but if we can at least, I don't know, it wasn't too bad driving it with it cracked last time, so if we can at least get back to that, I won't complain. Definitely want to cross thread them. That's how you know they're tight. It's kind of come together a little bit. I don't have too large of a gap. And then we'll put a couple tacks on it to hold it together and then take it out and really weld it up. I know there's a whole bunch of stuff about welding cast iron and how it doesn't work. And I'm not gonna do a great job, but we'll at least hold it together for a couple test runs, hopefully. And then we'll be able to fit again later. So I'm just gonna run this thing on like max power and see what happens. Fresh paint. That's nice. So, kind of as expected, the rusty cast iron just kind of disappears as you weld and that's what all the sparks and sweater were from. And then the weld doesn't really kind of melt into the metal, it's just on top of the seam. I guess we'll take this off and hopefully it held enough that we can clamp it down somewhere not on the engine and then weld up the rest of it. If you want to know what that looks like, trying to weld cast iron at uh, MIG, um, I wanted to try flux core because I think that the slag situation might work out in our favor, but the porosity of these welds, probably the worst work I've ever done, and I have not done any good work. But it's like, it looks terrible, but it's holding together. So I think I'll probably do another pass or two like this and then that'll be good enough that it's at least sealed so we can 
deal with it later. I'm also probably going to chop off all these, um, I don't know, they're like the thermactor tubes or whatever that system was called, and just weld those closed too while I'm at it. We're going to try some flux core now. Um, this was, those welds that you just saw were with Harbor Freight Vulcan wire. It was um, 0.03 MIG wire. Just using standard like C25 mix uh, gas as you do. Um, we're going to try some flux and see if the slag kind of helps. And it's nothing that I love more than changing over wire. So I don't know, maybe we'll even get crazy and try some shielding gas with the flux core and see what that does for us. Oh yeah, those are some ugly levels. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty bad. <laughs> you should. There we go. So this left hand side is the flux core and it actually came out way smoother. So the MIG stuff was all kind of like Porous. It looked like lava rock. It was so porous. It would kind of make these bubbles that would burst and be hollow. But the flux cores laid down a pretty solid bead. And I was actually able to kind of move a little weld pool along. So I'll do some more of that all the way around and see what happens. flux core in a while it's kind of fun like yeah. it's so smoky and i mean it's like i don't know it looks old-fashioned it's just like <laughs> it's art <laughs> well, like i don't know everybody's tig welding now and it's all like so controlled and it's like nice pretty well like you can do it without gloves on but you know <laughs> what mask. ugly welds are underrated <laughs> <laughs> well there you have it so if you wonder if you can you know weld up your cracked cast iron manifold you can it's not the kind of thing you probably want to do on anything you want to look nice, but if it's like a hard to find manifold, you can't just go to the junkyard and pull one for 10 bucks, but you need it to work, then go for it. Seems like flux core definitely works better. I actually turned down the gas on those last few welds. So if you've got a MIG set up, I don't know, real welders can tell you if that's good or not, but it seemed like it helped make a smoother bead. So I had some C25 mix in there and flux core and it worked pretty well um this is just a harbor freight welder it's the 220 volts like two, 170 amp uh, i was running it at like max and one which if you have the welder you can decipher what that means if you don't have that welder you'll have to figure out your own amperage settings because power level max is not really a numerical value but i don't know i guess we'll really find out if it worked and like obviously if you're trying to make this work really well there's stuff out there about like heating it up letting it cool slowly so it doesn't crack all that good stuff but i'm sure that would definitely help for us we just want to be able to put this on the truck so we can break in the engine and then we'll figure out headers or whatever once the engine is in the bay so what i'm going to do now is cut off these tubes and weld those shut because we're not using this old heat thermactor or whatever system. But until then, like this is where we'd have some like tagline that we'd say, so. <laughs> Keep the boogers in your nose and the welds on the metal. <laughs> I'm not a welder, so. Well, I wanna get the cutoff wheel. Oh, that's 
So now we're going to just bolt it up so that um, when we're ready to drop the engine in, we've at least got a exhaust, a crappy one, but at least it'll work for now. So, got this screw and this one. And the, yeah, the manifold kind of, or the, the gas kind of on there. You just help make sure that that one goes in its hole. We're gonna mount um, the spark plugs and wire them all up now. Got the anti seize. So the cam that we got is a 302 cam, so it uses a different firing order than the Windsor, or the 351 Windsor anyway. So all the spark plug wires probably have to get changed around on the distributor cap to match up with that, which is not a big deal, but it is what it is. And V8s are just so much work. So Instagram really liked my picture with the um, air cleaner up on top of the carb and the engine kind of together. I wonder if they'll like my picture of my welds. <laughs> that firing order up on internet. We love you, internet. So we need um, one, five, four, two, six, three, seven, eight. So that would be like one, five. So one, five, four. There's, there's the spark plug. There it is. Oh, yeah. So four is this wire, and then this one's two. All right, one more step closer. Yay! So we just did another test fit with our sweet uh, air cleaner with the chrome, but um, we just found out that it kind of interferes with the distributor cap now that we've got that mounted. So I'll just hope that once we actually set timing on the engine, it's like this instead of like back here, but. Um, Either way, it's fine. We'll make it work. You know, you make exceptions for the people you love especially when it's the chrome. So we got the engine pretty much together until the clutch shows up, then we'll install that. Um, Faith's over here painting a bunch of accessories. She's got the back side of the bumper painted black, and then like the hood brackets and the alternator bracket. Um, they're all looking pretty good getting cleaned out with oven cleaner and then just our typical rust-oleum black paint. This stuff is awesome and so is the oven cleaner for that matter. I With these they were really really crusty and so I stuck some oven cleaner on them, let it sit overnight in our utility sink in the basement and then came back in the morning and just scrubbed them off quickly and they look so much better. Yeah it really takes off all the flaky rust and the grease and then over here, I just pulled off the um, kind of steering situation to the tie rod ends and whatever these front linkages are called. All the ball joints are just super goofy on these, so we got new ones. Unfortunately, you can't just replace the ball joints. You have to replace the entire thing. So like this center piece is like 15 pounds of steel. But yeah, these ball joints are just nasty. I don't know that they're in terrible shape, but the boots are all cracked and grease leaked everywhere. And figure, well, we're in here, got everything out of the way. Might as well undo it all instead of in two weeks once we get it on the road and realize that it drives all over the place. Which it did. Last time I actually drove this thing on that one day that we took it out, it was like pretty bad. Like I was expecting, sloppy for an old vehicle, but it was like difficult. 
to drive straight. So hopefully it's better. Um, I feel done. I think I'm gonna go inside and eat ice cream until Faith gives up too. And then we'll probably go watch TV with the dog.